So we had the ARM TechCon 2010, and the ARM had a hu huge announcement. What was that? So we, today, uh, in fact yesterday, we announced the launch of the new Mali T604 graphics processor. So that's, that's the, like the next generation Mali, right? Absolutely. Building on the success of uh, Mali, T, uh, Mali 400 and Mali 200 before that, the Mali T600 family is uh, building on top of that. It's a huge step up in performance and flexibility, but uh, maintaining, obviously, our energy efficiency, which you'd expect from us. So uh, could you explain some of the, like, the new things, like the new features or the new uh, technology? What is the new ingredients has been like? Okay, so we've, we've tried to do two things here. Um, we're trying to extend the performance for the graphics itself. And we're also looking at saying, okay, this is a new era in uh, visual computing. And we're going to see GPGPU, which is general purpose computing on GPU, being introduced into the mobile, into the embedded platform space. And this is hugely exciting because it's going to mean that we can do lots more things. We're putting huge numbers of gigaflops down onto the silicon with Mali T604. And it's kind of an inflection point in the industry. We're going to see a whole bunch of new applications coming out. We're going to be enabling a whole field full of uh, augmented reality. We're going to make it actually feel a little better, make more realism into your graphics. It's going to be much more engaging, much more involving, much more compute associated with the whole thing. It's going to be a real exciting ride as we go through and our customers start deploying Mali into the, uh, into the consumer space over the next couple of years. Nice, because the, the current Mali is already, it looks nice, it looks pretty cool, but somehow there's more than that, there's more than just like pixels and polygons and the... Yes, so pixels and polygons it, it, is all about graphics and, and we're not giving up on that in any way. Uh, we think it's very, very important to care about every single pixel. Uh, we want more pixels, higher frame rate, higher resolution. Uh, the, the, better, the more the better for the user experience. But also we have very capable devices in these GPUs now uh, that allow us to do more than just graphics. This GPU computing uh, which will enable uh, a whole bunch of stuff on, on, on top of this. It will bring in uh, the ability to do a lot of image processing, computational photography, uh, allowing augmented reality to take a step up and, and move into the truly handheld uh, devices. So how does it improve augmented reality, for example? So the image processing capabilities that, that you have there would, would allow you to do things like image recognition. If you think about uh, a current generation device for augmented reality, you're overlaying a layer of information on uh, a video picture. And with a GPS and a digital compass and an accelerometer, you can sort of work out you know, what you're looking at. Uh, but on top of that, with image recognition, we can provide much better registration. So, for example, when you, you, you pull up that layer of information about the Eiffel Tower, you'll put it on top of the Eiffel Tower, not 20 degrees off, you know. So you, 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 it, it'll, it'll allow for much better things than that. So, the, um, I mean, the filtering that you need to do for that, in terms of the actual processing, is very computer intensive. And it's not something you can do on today's devices, but it is something you will be able to do on tomorrow's devices. So, uh, this is coming when? When is it going to be available? So, uh, ARM's business model is uh, we are releasing uh, the design to our partners, the silicon partners who actually manufacture chips, and we'll be releasing that early in 2011. Uh, of course, then it takes a long time to make these very complex silicon chips, and then, of course, those chips have to be made into consumer electronics devices. Typically, that takes two to three years. So, you know, it's coming to a tablet near you, 2012, 2013 time frame. Tied up with, uh, you know, the Cortex A15, we're going to see some really good compute subsystems from ARM being deployed in consumer devices. It's going to be an interesting ride over the next couple of years for these guys out there. Is it possible to say, uh, to compare it with, let's say, Intel and the graphic cards they have and stuff? Is it some kind of performance that you can say about the what, I, what we can say is that uh, you've seen a whole bunch of uh, blog reviews over the last few days about uh, the amount of heat and power consumed uh, by uh, current PC graphics cards, which are consuming about 300 watts of electrical power, and uh, our power budget is typically less than a watt. So that's what we find most interesting. 300 times less power consumption. Yeah, than the typical. 
I mean, we're not quite at so desktop levels of performance for today. You know, you can't quite get there because they're looking at teraflops. But if we get, we're going to get there. The roadmap, you know, we're starting the, the Midgard architecture and we're at the start of a GPU compute journey. And Midgard architecture that we're introducing, the Mali T604 is the first member of that family and we have a roadmap and it's going to go through the roof over the next couple of years as we're driving that forward. And all the customers that taking, will be taking it will be able to keep their software compatible through that, that whole period of this explosive growth. So, yeah. So you're having fun right now? We're having the oh, best fun. Love. <laughs> it's been a great show for us. Yeah. Really, you really feed off the excitement being generated by these new devices. It's going to be great. Yeah. Really and, exciting. And at work, uh, it's fun? Yes. Yeah. What's what's not to be fun? You you work on these really cool devices producing this uh, really cool graphics. I mean, we have some great fun with Marley 400 already. We've got some some stuff running over here, which is stereoscopic 3D, uh, HD. Okay, and yeah. it, it won't come out on a video, but it's stereo 3D on HD. It looks a bit blurry because it's stereo. Yeah. But you see it through the glasses. There you go. Yeah. They switched off. So. Uh, Okay. This is something that comes out of the mobile phone, like yeah, 3D. And this is this is a mobile chipset. Right? A mobile chipset, this 1080p, 3D. This is 720. This one, but yeah. yeah, 720p, 3D, coming out of a mobile chipset today. Just think what we're going to be able to do in the next few years, right? It's going Usually, to, to do 3D, you need like a, an expensive computer, right? Yeah, but right. this is this is coming out of a yeah you know, sub twenty dollar chipset, right? How about uh, the companies that uh, argue that for uh, like uh, uh, supercomputers you need to have some kind of graphics, uh, they use the, their graphic acceleration stuff. Uh, is there anything that can be said about your future solutions in terms of uh, accelerating so, some, so some kind of calculations? This is, this is, a, this is a, an expansion market for us, but uh, the use of GPUs in uh, server farms for GPU computing for supercomputing territory is uh, entirely predicated upon, upon power consumption and heat consumption. So actually taking an embedded GPU that's very low electrical power dissipates very little heat uh, and forming those into server farms makes a great deal of sense. But that's clearly, uh, that's clearly an expansion for us. Is there, if, if people want to consume more power, are they allowed to with the, your solution? Can they like say, we want to use two or three watts yes, and so, have yeah. more performance? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what process you put it down onto. So we, we typically target a low power silicon process. So you know, for an embedded device, that would happen. But if you put it in a set, set of box or a tethered mains attached process, you have more power to play with. You can put it into a G process, you can ramp the clock speeds up, and you're going to get even more performance. Could we just, uh, one, one second, just yeah. walk over here? Uh, is it going to speed up web browsing, uh, full screen desktop uh, computing, stuff like that? Yes, so um, there's, a, there's an initiative called uh, WebGL, uh, which is uh, some bindings to allow uh, modern browsers uh, to accelerate the uh, display of information on the screen using the GPU underneath. So your browsing is going to be snappier, uh, your display of your uh, web-based uh, uh, web.2.0 type <laughs> applications is going to be better. So if, if some people uh, can do ARM Cortex A9 uh, already and use that for a, a laptop and desktop, then the, the, the using the next Mali and using the next Cortex A15 is going to be even Absolutely. Even better for that. Absolutely. For sure. And it's all based on the standards here, the graphic standard process, second like GLS. So it's coming, right? It's, it's and, good stuff. And uh, this is uh, as good as a P PlayStation 3, as good as the Xbox? What do you say? Ooh, tricky. Uh, we, we don't really find those comparisons to be very useful. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Thanks.